Good morning. It's uh, day two. Slipped in a bit. Um, wasn't planning to, but um, based on the weather, it was supposed to be nice and sunny today. But it actually uh, was raining last night, or in, actually, or, or this morning. And uh, of course, then I said, ah, screw it. So I just turned over in the bed and, or in the sleeping bag and said, I'm sleeping longer. <laughs> Um, it stopped uh, raining, but uh, it's overcast still. But uh, I guess I'll get up and have some breakfast. So I was just, uh, I guess I didn't take a video of uh, our camping location. But I was camped right over in this mossy spot. It was nice and soft. And here's the view of the lake. And it's a good thing we set up the bug shelter last night, even though we really didn't need it for... For the rain or anything it was just more of the mosquitoes um, but it proved to be really valuable this morning because like i said it was still sprinkling rain and uh, we got some you know shelter from the rain and the wind a bit uh, you can see our fire pit and uh, sean was camped over there in his tent over there so he's just packing up now so we got a fire going sean uh, is trying to dry out his shoes a little bit bit a little bit i mean i'm wearing mine as always um, but uh, he's trying to dry it out because he's gonna wear his boots and uh, uh, dry socks today seeing that we're not going to be doing any uh, major portages so I'm just here in the under the bug shelter the weather is uh, still overcast and it's actually sprinkling rain on and off uh, with some uh, good gusts of wind and uh, of course a little concern we are heading out into Georgian Bay but although the wind is coming from it's kind of west south and so we will actually be on the lee side so for the most part so i think it'll be okay um, it's just when we turn around the bend on the south side where we're hoping to camp where it might get choppy but again we won't know until we get out there and if that's the case then we'll just uh camp uh you know more in the protected leeward side hopefully it'll clear up today was supposed to be forecasted to be just sun and it's nothing and <laughs> nothing like it so it's it is what it is and we'll just make the most of it so you can hear so you can hear the wind howling some good gusts coming in and then it actually kind of stops for a while look the boat shelter lifts and drops and it's actually pretty cool today it's not uh, not warm at all so nothing like a nice summer day that's for sure Some of the interesting things I found here at the campsite. Uh, there's an old Ontario uh, license plate. I don't know if there's a, it says 73, but it says the last sticker says 01. So it's been obviously here for quite a few years. Um, and this camp has obviously been used by hunters. If you look here, there's a, a table which um, Sean says uh, would be perfect for uh, gutting um, or filleting fish. But also, you notice that there's evidence of hunters here previously. There's uh, bullet casings. And if you look, um, <laughs> there's a fishing rod up there. Don't know why it's up there. There's a, a deer antler. I'm up on a tree here. Um, I came here to see this. It's a moose skull. See this huge head? It's bleach white. And just uh, behind it, as you can see, I can't pull it because my one arm is holding onto the tree here, is the antlers of a deer. Uh, this is what I saw from a distance when we came out of the, the mouth of the Mazanazing uh, River. And uh, I thought this was a campsite sign, but <laughs> As we got closer, we realized it wasn't the campsite sign. It was uh, moose skull and uh, deer antlers. So I'm just high above the ground right now. Lots of uh, you know branches uh, that are cut um, so that you can easily climb up here, and that's probably how they got it up here as well too. So 
decided to climb up in here and uh, check it out and show you the show you the skull up close. I just wanted to show you the camp sign um, that they have on Point Grandine Park. It's kind of unique. They're smaller and they're actually, I believe, they're metal. So take a look here. If you look up here, there you go. And yeah, it's metal. It's cool. It's got a portage sign. I don't know why it has a portage sign on it, but it certainly has a, a campsite sign on it. And it says Point Grandine right over here. Maybe it's just to, they do have uh, campsites designated, I believe, for backpackers um, when you when you reserve the site uh, they're a different color than the orange ones which are for camping uh, sorry for canoe canoe trippers so maybe the portage sign is combined with a campsite sign to saying it's strictly only for canoe trippers so I don't know I can always ask later but uh, it's uh, it's a definitely a sturdy little sign that's gonna probably last here for a long long time Today we don't have any, um, you know, adventurous, you know, outings like in terms of bushwhacking or anything like that. It's pretty much all paddling. So Sean's gonna uh, get out his um, his fishing rod. He's gonna set it up and he's gonna see if he can catch some fish today. Are you are you hoping to catch anything in particular? Uh, no. Just, Just anything? Yeah, I'm gonna put a generalized lure on and yeah. See what I can get. He's got a fancy. Uh, bunch of uh all right would you uh, this is not a tackle box i guess right or it's, is it this is uh not even a quarter of my <laughs> but check this out i'm not sure if i've caught the fish or the fishing industry's caught caught me. you well i think uh this definitely shows that it has caught you but you're definitely <laughs> using this to catch fish hopefully yeah. in equal proportions right well yeah that's, that's the plan uh, we'll see if i catch something today then it's worth it if not then <laughs> Maybe I should give up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, but look, there's there's a bunch of lures in here. Um, look at the size of these things. This We're is like on bigger water, so. Yeah, he's hoping to catch a shark, a freshwater shark. <laughs> or a big musky, whatever. Yeah, but yeah, he's got some uh, pretty fancy stuff, doodads in here. So let's see, uh, we're gonna have a fish fry tonight. At least we're hoping, right? That we're hoping. He's brought a cast iron frying pan and it's well seasoned so it's ready for some nice fish fillet. So cross our fingers uh, or cross my fingers that it will produce tonight. <laughs> Is the pressure on? Do you feel a little bit of pressure? None at all. No, not at none all? None at all. <laughs> none at all. Can you tie the knot now? Are you a little nervous? <laughs> no, it's the wind. It keeps catching this thing on me. And... Alright. Anyway, yeah. Okay, I'll leave the guy alone. <laughs> So as you can see over here, there's a spike right in this rock that's uh, located right in the middle of uh, this lake and uh, it's probably was used during the logging era. Sean's have been having luck catching a lot of uh, greens. We're going to have salad instead of fish uh, at lunch. We're just, uh, I stopped here. Um, we're near Collins Inlet. We were just taking a break, and he just snagged onto a nice fish. Whoa! Look at the size of that. That's a walleye. Oh! Wow! That was a good size. Probably like a four or five pounder. Yeah. He ripped that right off. Sorry, my friend. <laughs> well, I can say that you definitely caught one. Even though you didn't bring it to the boat, you definitely caught one.
Sean just hooked, hooked onto a pike. It's been a good fishing spot. He's uh, caught a small bass that it was, wasn't worth uh, mentioning, but this is a decent sized pike, but probably not too big enough for a fillet. He's, uh, his fishing is on. We found the spot. Here's the pike. There you go. Nice. Probably what? Go. Two, three pounds maybe? If that. Yeah, yeah just a little guy. All right. Nice. Put him back in and... Just looks like it's a pretty good spot, eh? Yeah. Yeah, I might as well keep casting. See if you get it any more. So, uh, <clears throat> we're just uh, at the the mouth of the the creek or river that runs into Georgian Bay to or to Collins Inlet, and we can definitely hear a drop. So it looks like uh, it's not runnable. Um, although we went on the other side. And uh, it said private property, so we decided to come over to this side. But there is no portage, you can see here. It's just rugged terrain. And uh, I'm just gonna go check out what the river looks like. This one looks a little bit like a trail in front of me. Oh man, yeah. It's not runnable. Big ledge. There's a huge pipe. I don't know what that is. It probably goes to town. But that's uh that's totally unrunnable. You can't even drag it, there's too many rocks, so we're gonna have to see if we can portage uh, all the gear in the queue in the forest down down below. Nice ledge, eh? Yeah. How's it look? So, just up on a rise and uh, um, I think there's uh, multiple drops on this uh, river here and there's a lot of rocks so um, it's risky, like we could get the canoe right down here but uh, there's a few areas you can run, but they'll be bony. But I believe it drops down further because I can see a, a depre uh, like a drop down there. So uh, I think maybe what we'll do is possibly go to the other side, even though it says uh, private property, and then we'll probably trek ourselves and go down there. I think it's going to be uh, too much trouble trying to get the canoes here, run a bit, and then get out, and then whatever. We might as well just do it in one shot. There is a trail. And uh, we followed it on River Right, and it kind of leads to nowhere. And uh, we got down to the end, we could see Collins Inlet. And then uh, we had to try to trace our way back because there was no trail there. This uh, trail that you see here goes all the way to an opening, and there's like rubbish there. It seems to keep going, but it doesn't go towards the water, it just follows parallel to the, to the waterway or a river. Anyhow, when we got to the end, you might not be able to hear all the wind, we uh, backtracked from the edge of the water and we did find an old trail. So it might be hard for you to see but there's something right in here and uh, you'll see more clearly as it go through here. A group must have gone through here. Um, you could definitely see the, um, the furrow in the, in the ground or the depression and see now you can clearly see it ah, sorry there's so many things to get caught on but uh, yeah so it's uh, some parts are clearer than others and then some parts are overgrown it's obviously no one has been through here in quite some time but it goes so you can see it goes right down here it's uh, pretty evident uh, just make sure I don't fall here and uh, We'll make our way to the end, and at the end there is this um, little building, concrete building, and that explains why we saw this big pipe 
in the river. So there's this big, huge pipe that's probably about two, two feet in diameter maybe, or maybe even three. And it goes from the top of this river and it goes, goes all the way down to the bottom and it goes into this house or this, this shed. And inside there, it must be like a turbine. And, it, and that's where um, they were generating electricity, probably for this town. But it's obviously been abandoned and it's in its rough shape right now. But I'll show you later once I get down to the end. If you want to see the pipe, it's right, I'm on top of it. I'm trying to get over it. I'm stuck on this log here. Just leave my camera here. There you go. See, it's a huge, huge pipe. And it's uh, plastic or something. It's not metal. So, I don't know if this is the way. The trail kind of disappears in the middle, but this is an open rocky area right by the river. And I'm hoping it's uh, easier to get down to that little um, little uh, building. So here, if you look upstream, we were up on that rock earlier when we were scouting on, on river left. And uh, there's a bunch of rapids and drops. As you can see here, it's beautiful. And you see uh, the stakes in the, in the rock back uh, probably in the logging days, but it's absolutely gorgeous here. Okay, coming this way might not have been a good idea. It's a nice view, but it doesn't really have a trail here, so I'm going back. But then I heard this sound. You gotta check this out. It's hilarious. Didn't expect a, uh, a geyser midway through this portage, or if you want to call it portage. Check this out. If it was a hot day, I'd be so underneath that. I guess uh, somehow a hole got punk ruptured in the pipe, and that pipe is pretty thick, I would imagine, and tough. But look, it's, uh, it's got a hole, and it's, it's like a geyser. It's hilarious. So you can see the pipe continues down, goes down into the green, and then further down, and then there's a, there's a building down there. So I'm gonna have to get back over there, onto that side, and continue down. So it's not gonna be uh, easy. I didn't expect to be humping over uh, a big uh, pipe. For my hard, hard work, I get some raspberries. Check this out. A ras A raspberry. Mm. Yummy. There's blueberries out as well too. Alright, I might as well make my way over. There's rocks everywhere, so it's uh, a little precarious. Check the oh ow, check this out. Drilled hole. I don't know what that was for, but okay, time to make my way across. I bet you none of you guys have portaged like this on a big pipe, smooth uh, black pipe. I hope it doesn't. Uh, well, first of all, I don't want to slip off of it, but you know what? Actually, if I continue down, I can almost make my way to the building, assuming I don't slip off because that will hurt. I got a heavy pelican case in one hand and my barrel and it's actually smooth terrain. Check this out. Check that out for a portage trail. I bet you there's not too many of you guys that have done that. And there's a, uh, it's chained. I guess to, to prevent the pipe from shifting. But, hey, this is not bad. This is a lot easier than the, the rocks. If you got good balance, why not? Actually, hold on. See, there's the building. As you can see, the pipe goes right into the building there. So, I'm just gonna jump off right here. And then make my way over to the water. Cool. 
Never th thought I could say I'd use a, a big pipe as my portage trail, but it worked out well. But uh, here's this building. It was kind of odd because it was made out of concrete. And then when we uh, went in here to open it up, you can see that the pipe comes in here and uh, there must be some kind of turbine thing that generates uh, power to the town and you can see the panels here, right? But it's obviously been abandoned. No one's been in here for a long time. In fact, if you look over here, the window's busted out and the water, when the water levels are high, all that driftwood comes in here and that's why you see all this wood everywhere in here. So it's curious to see, uh, curious to know how long uh, this place is, has been operational when it was been, when it's been abandoned. But here's another thing we saw some words here. Uh, a female group came here. It said uh, tripping, tripping, either balls or I don't know gals or something like that. Anyhow, it was here in 2012, and they put their names here. And that might also explain why it looks like there's a portage trail to get down here. Now I'm gonna go back for the second load and for the canoe. Let's just close this up. Whoa. But uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Man, I feel both uh, elation and uh, anxiety. No, I, I guess the word is is an anxiety. Just more kind of like uh, just annoyed. Um, I just had to run into the bush to take care of business and the mosquitoes, oops, mosquitoes are alive and well here. They, uh, man, they attacked with a vengeance and, you know, they attached to places that I couldn't exactly slap and man, that, uh, that left me with quite a few bites. So it's, it's not going to be a very comfortable walk or paddle because it's going to itch like heck. But one thing I wanted to show you. Um, Sean is taking a, a is uh, casting out a few um, to see if he can catch anything. But when we were looking at the initial trail, it veered off, so the water is down that way, and the trail came up over the hump, and then it veered uh, to the right and continued to parallel the water. We knew it wasn't the the right way, but if you look here, there is a bunch of junk. It's actually, I don't know, I mean it looks like there might have been a house or a cabin. I mean there's asphalt shingles and there's what even looks like even a boat there or I don't even know what the heck happened. Like, I'm just kind of worried about walking around here because there's like, there's probably nails everywhere but you can see it's all collapsed. There's a, I think it's an outboard motor, old one or maybe that's another one too. I mean, I'm not even sure what that is, but you can see there's junk all the way over there as well too. But I'm gonna go over there. And I'm gonna show you something pretty I'm cool. This way. Oh look, there's old wheels, and I don't know what that is, but if it's a. Uh, this is really old. It's all metal. It's sitting right in here. But. <laughs> Besides that, I wanted to show you something kind of cool. Well, it's a little sad, but it's a canoe. Check that out. Um, it says on the side here, Pitfield. I don't know uh, if that's the name of the company, but here's the metal frame of whatever that thing, uh, maybe it was some kind of wagon uh, that was part of, oops. Uh, there's more of it over there. But yeah, this canoe's uh, been left here. It's uh, uh, there we go. So it looks like it's probably fiberglass, but uh, it's obviously been abandoned for quite a bit of time. I guess I'll just leave it back the way it was. But obviously, it's not usable, it's crushed on that end, and it's sitting abandoned with the rest of the, the junk that's here. So. I mean, this area, you can see, it's surrounded by trees and it's a cleared area and obviously it probably housed this building and someone's property here at one time. Maybe they uh, grew things here. 
but I don't know how good it is because I'm walking here and it's pretty wet. So, um, don't know what the history or what happened here years ago, but quite interesting. This is the other thing that we saw when we were looking for a trail through here. Came to the edge of this drop off, and you can see, whoa, you can see what's uh, left of Colin Inlet. I'm not sure if there's people here. That building looks fairly new, or not new, but in much better shape. Actually, you know what? Why don't I just go down? There's uh, uh Whoa. So if you look over here, that building looks fairly well kept and the windows are closed and the doors closed, but that building there, that building there, the doors are open. And uh, I wonder if it's all abandoned. I'm not even sure what's going on. There's, I can see another building way up there. But uh, all these electrical lines are probably tied into that uh, that generator that was uh, producing power uh, for this little town. Um, I should check up on the history on this town. I, I, I imagine it was probably to do with logging or maybe even fishing. But there's obviously, uh, at least we don't see anybody here at this point. So I'm going to head back. Um, I wonder if he's caught any fish, but we'll get back into the can uh, canoe and continue down into Georgian Bay. We've just got to navigate that section. That section looks like it drops again, so we might have to hump over that mound of rock and then uh, and then put it in back at the other side. Okay, so let's uh, go back down and meet up with... Uh... Ooh, look at this. Blueberries. Big blueberries. Yummy. Mm. Yummy. So I'm just kind of coming around this granite granite mound and you can see uh, Sean down there with a the canoe in that electrical house or whatever you want to call it. Ooh, it's gonna be a little tricky to get down. Okay, let me try over this way. And if I fell into that, <laughs> that foamy bubbly uh, water, that would be disgusting. Although I bet you, you guys would probably laugh about it. Okay, I'm gonna slide down this way. Let's see. Did you catch anything? No way. Are you serious? Wow. So uh, he hasn't caught anything, but he said he had a 30 pound test break on him. So something took it and he lost his lure. Yeah. Wow. Something big took it. All right. This is going to be the interesting part. Let's slide. Okay, so this is the drop. Actually, it's a runnable rapid. Um, but I think we're gonna not run it just because uh, Sean's got, uh, we're front heavy, he's got some weight on me. And so if you go down, we're gonna take in water, a lot of water. If you look here, it's pretty much a chute. It's a clean run on uh, River Right. But uh, we would take in some water and uh, um, I suggest that maybe we take some stuff out, but. Anyhow, it's just kind of, it's not warm today. I don't, want, I don't think it would be wise to be uh, going into the water. And uh, we still got some paddling to do, so I don't think we're going to risk it right now. Uh, we're just going to quickly check out some of the cabins here uh, before we continue on. It hasn't been looked after though in years. No. It'd be a good 10 years, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, if you look here, there's uh, foundations. Uh, the base for probably a house or or some kind of structure all over here. You see them all over here? And there's obviously a bunch of ruins and stuff like that, but uh, I'm gonna see if we can check out that cabin because that one looks abandoned. The doors are wide open. So we'll sneak through here and see if we can check it out. Maybe I'll find a little chair. Yeah. So I think you can see the squared timber logs. Uh, don't know what they were for, but this is all overgrown with raspberry bushes and thorns. But you can see it's uh, wow, it's totally open up there. 
So I don't know if anyone's been here for, ooh, raspberries. <laughs> it's easy to get distracted. Mm. Yummy. Wow, there's more around here. All right, maybe I should just go check the cabin first. Delish. Mm, yummy. All right. Hopefully the steps don't break on me. All right. So it is definitely abandoned. Hopefully there's no bear hanging out here. But yeah, windows, drawers. I don't know. A wood stove. There's a lot of animal crap here. Animal doo doo all over the place. Bunk, well, not bunk beds, beds. And they're obviously kids' beds. These aren't obviously for adults. There's holes in the walls and kind of a little uh, freaky. The storm's coming? Some animals got in here, but it, everything's torn up. You can see the roof. And here's the shower and the bathroom, but it's just a mess. Yeah. It's kind of freaky. It's all kind of torn up, and there's some animal crap here. There's obviously some animals gone through here. Things have either went through the roof and come, like some of the ceiling tiles are all broken. So. But yeah, I don't think anyone's been in here for a bit. Now, that structure looks like it's in a lot better condition. You can see the windows are intact, the doors are all closed. I wonder if someone has been there, but don't know uh, how they've accessed it. Come here by boat, maybe? I'm not sure, but it's definitely sealed up. All the other buildings could look like this. I don't think anyone's been here for, for ages. All right. So just tucked in out of the wind so you don't get all the wind noise on the speaker. But uh, we took uh, a lot of the stuff out of the canoe and we decided that we're going to run it. I mean, I know it's totally runnable, but uh, it's just the risk. Uh, like, like I said, uh, Sean's not uh, a whitewater uh, paddler, but I'm sure we could make it. And we just took all the stuff that could possibly get wet and all the stuff that may uh, get lost. So um, it'll also free up the weight at the bow so it will be a little lighter so it won't, we won't dive into into the pool below so we're gonna make a go of it so stay tuned here we go Forward. we'll start drawing now and you gotta you're gonna have to sit down yeah there we go Right, I've got, got the angle. That's it. Enough. Enough. Draw. Nope. Now, draw, draw. Yep. Draw. Good. There we go. <laughs> that made my day. <laughs> Abandoned town. How much longer is that uh, lawnmower is going to stay out of the water? already partially in water. When that wood breaks apart, it's going in. There's a sign up there. It says Mazanazing something lodge. They might have had, uh, it actually says fishing, hunting, and snowmobiling. Call whatever number. So Mazanazing something lodge, right? Something lodge? It's like River Lodge. River Lodge? Yeah. Well, it's obviously been abandoned because they're there's nothing here that's, there's no one up keeping this place, so it's totally abandoned. So we're just now on Philip um, Edward Island. There it is, right, right in front of us. And we're just gonna head over to the left here and then head down uh, closer to Georgian Bay. And if it's pretty bad, we'll probably won't go very far, but uh, we'll only won't know until we get there.
Okay, we're just uh, at the south end of uh, Philip Edward Island. We're just going to make the turn westward. And um, it's, it's a long day. We've been taking our time fishing and, and we left late because of the rain this morning. But uh, Sean has actually a, apparently a really good idea and uh, he's going to tell you about it. So the next time I'm just going to fish and troll and yeah. sit back and relax up front while yeah. David does the canoeing and the guiding and the getting us where we need to be. Safe <laughs> and sound. I just didn't want to interfere with that so I figured I would just fish along the way. <laughs> Maybe provide a lunch or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart ass, eh? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sean's discovering that he's actually he's discovering muscles that he's never had before. <laughs> Apparently, he he found out that he's got a neck. He's got a shoulder. <laughs> oh, did he get something? No, I caught no. a big boulder. A boulder? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're. Um, <clears throat> Because we took our time, uh, a lot of time at Colin Inlet, um, and we got a little behind, and so we're doing the final push to camp. So we had to do a little bit of a, a push to paddle, and uh, like I said, Sean's discovering some new muscles. I said, you know, he's gonna go home, and his wife is gonna be like, Sean, wow, those lats, you can fly with those things. <laughs> right to the couch. <laughs> right to the couch. <laughs> oh, poor guy, eh? Oh, well. Maybe we can work on some other body parts for him. No, actually, no. No, actually, no. <laughs> Edit. Cut. Edit. Cut. <laughs> so we just uh, um, arrived uh, at a campsite. It kind of looked really pretty from uh, from the water, and uh, we we're gonna go a little further. But I think um, it might be a good decision to end the day. It's about quarter after six, and uh, Sean's pretty much pooped. I'm just kind of concerned because there's, if you look over there, there's some really dark clouds just moving this way. But they are kind of going south. Uh, I just don't know what what it's like over there. It looks like there's rain because it's really dark over there. But uh, hopefully it bypasses. It. And we're in a nice little location. Um, luckily, we, we got that storm front that was uh, just uh, east of us. It passed to the south, and thankfully it did because it looked like a pretty a wicked rainstorm. So, other than just the little sprinkles, um, we quickly set up the bug shelter. Um, not so much because of the bugs, but for the rain in case it, it did uh, dump on us. And uh, we pretty much got a camp all set up. I got my solo tent over there, and uh, Sean's got his uh, nice palatial tent uh, set up over over here. Hopefully, he's got a flat spot. Last night uh, it was a little bumpy, he said, and he had a hard time sleeping last night. So um, hopefully, it'll be better this better today. And thankfully, the rains uh, passed, and we might be able to sit out by the fire and have supper tonight. Okay. So. Just in the bug shelter, I want to get uh, supper going because I'm starving. Uh, so what's for supper tonight? Uh, I'm going to have a sidekick uh, garlic alfredo spaghetti. Uh, these are pretty good uh, for a quick and easy meal and they're pretty cheap. I think uh, you can get them on sale for like 99 cents. Um, but anyhow, so this is all pretty much carb and uh, so you certainly need some protein with that. So I've got some dehydrated beef which is uh, seasoned with Italian seasoning which will, will go perfectly with uh, the spaghetti. So I'll take half of this and the other half will be used for my other meal, uh, other pasta meal uh, the, the next night. Cheers to surviving the second night or not the second night, second day. Yeah. I made it. I can do anything. It's actually a good song. The best part. Work hard. Sit around a campfire and then have a nice meal. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's uh, the end of day two. It's... <laughs> I'm just doing a video. <laughs> um... Just uh, so it's the end of day two. Um, it's just a little after 
it seems like the, the mosquitoes come out about this time and um, even here out on Georgian Bay there's quite a few of them so <clears throat> it's kind of nice to get into the tent and uh, be somewhat protected but uh, it was a pretty fall day and uh, the weather's uh, it's kind of been on and off as well too a lot of wind um, gray overca overcast skies and rain on and off intermittently but uh, we're uh, we're almost where we wanted to be, um, just a little shy of uh, where, we, where I plan to be, but it's not a big deal. We can make it up um, easily tomorrow morning. And uh, besides, um, we, we thought that there was going to be a storm coming our way, but uh, luckily it just bypassed us and continued south. And besides, it was probably a good time to st uh, stop. Sean uh, um, <laughs> had a long day for, for him. He's not used to paddling. Um, you know, because he hasn't been tripping a lot, so it was uh, tough um, on his arms and his neck and his shoulders, and so uh, it was good to end and uh, get fed and uh, feel a lot better now. So <clears throat> I think I'm going to just do some reading, maybe writing, and then I'll probably crash too. So we'll see what tomorrow holds. Hopefully the weather will be better, and uh, otherwise, uh, let's see. Good night. Dry land.